Hi, so this is part two of my three part series of weaving with a cardboard loom. In the first video, I um, showed you how to make this loom. In this video, I will show you how to make this very simple uh, tapestry. So for this one, you will need um, at least three colors. You can use more uh, if you would like to use more colors than this, but for this one, I just used three. So you can have three colors of yarn. You will need a pair of scissors and your loom. And that is all um, for this. So as you can see for this project, I used a pattern um, and um, a pattern within my colors. Um, I was inspired by a Peruvian study guide that I created. If you're interested in taking a look at the Peruvian study guide, um, you can take a look at my shop that I'll link in below. Um, but, um, uh, or if you would just like to learn how to, to weave, um, that's great too. For this tapestry, I used three colors. So for um, this tutorial, I'm also just going to use three colors. Uh, so for this one, I decided to use this uh, gray, this brown, and the burnt orange that I used for uh, the background. So to learn a little weaving terminology, this yarn that goes um, up and down is called the warp. This, the yarn that we will use to go from uh, left to right or from right to left is called the weft. Um, so for the warp, I use this burnt orange and then we're gonna continue with that color as well within our pattern. So for our bottom row, I decided to use this brown color. So I'm gonna start with this brown color. I tend to have a lot of yarn left over um, because I don't necessarily measure <laughs> the amount of yarn that I need. Um, so you want only about five or six rows it doesn't take a lot of yarn to create those five or six rows. If you want to kind of have a more accurate measure, you can um, put the lay the yarn there. Make sure you have this extra tail, um, and then you can go across like that. So then that would be two rows, three, four, and then so on until you get to five or six. Again, the pattern kind of is is up to you at this point. So what we're going to do is start by tying the yarn here on the right. And then you'll take your ruler and we weave it through and then wrap up the ruler like this. So get, this gives you a little bit more space to be able to weave in and out. If you have a needle, like a larger needle like this, you can use that. Um, otherwise, you can just use your fingers too. And then you're going to start by going under this first one over and then so under over under over and then under over so the technique is under over until the very end and this is your very basic, simple weave. All right, so one tip is you don't wanna to pull too much on the string like this, because as you notice, when you do that, it brings in the right side too much. So you wanna keep this right side loose. The same again when the, with the left side, as you bring it over to the other side, you don't want to pull it too tight. Um, so now you were on the left side, you'll go over 
and then under. Oops. Fix our ruler. And then over. Under, over. And then you'll do this until you get to the far right. And then you can take your fingers and kind of go through and then make sure that um, the strings are close together. Um, if you did watch my previous video on how to make the cardboard loom, uh, one reason why we have these knots on the side too is just so that we don't go lower than that. And then we also did this line in the back where it said stop weaving. So you wanna make sure that you give yourself enough space right here on the bottom, um, because at the very end, we're gonna cut our string. And so you wanna have enough uh, space to be able to tie it. So for this one, we'll just continue to go from the left to the right, very simple. And I'll probably with this, this yarn make about five or six rows. So you can do the same with your yarn as well. So I noticed that um, I did nine rows, which is fine if you have five or six or if you have nine. Again, it's the pattern that you're creating for yourself, so um, there is no magic number of rows that you need. When I was finished, I tied, uh, double knotted the left side of it, and then I cut the string. Um, so at the end of this, um, what you can do is you could potentially tuck, so you want the string long enough where you will tuck it into the weave in the back of the weave. If you feel like that is too clunky like this one, you'll notice that I actually just ended up double knotting some of them and then I just cut them and made them shorter. I did tuck uh, this one You'll see just this one back there. So that's the only one that's tucked, but the rest of them I just cut super, super short so you don't have it. Um, but I'll leave it a little bit long so it, when we're all finished with our pro project, we can decide together if we want to tuck it or if we want to cut it. So just something to think about. Um, so now I'll cut the this um, and I will it to the right side. So I do a double knot to make it nice and tight. And then do the same under over, very simple weave. You'll notice in this row, it goes under. So you don't wanna do another under um, because then you will see the warp uh, too much. Um, so I kind of like to have it more smooth and hidden. So what I'm going to do is make this the under part, the under, or where I go under on this piece of yarn and the very outside. And then I go over on this, this one. And then under, over, under, over. And again, you'll just do the same thing about like, you know, maybe six rows or so. So six rows, just back and forth.
After finishing the last six rows, I then tie the burnt orange color and I just do one row of an under over weave and then tie it to the other end and then I continue with the pattern. So now we've finished the weave. Now we're going to remove the weave from the loom. So as you see, when you flip it over, you still have your, your pieces here. So what I tend to do is I start with the first one. I cut this corner here. And then now I have this one. Um, I do a, a square knot. So I'll go over that way and then I do it again. So I just double knot them and then we have this one as well. So you'll notice this one is knotted. Then I take um, this one and I do the same thing. So just a double knot. And then I go to the next one. You can pull it over like that and then cut it. And then again, then you take what the knotted piece and this side and double knot it. And then this piece and do the same. So you're going to do that um, all the way across and then flip it and then do the same thing. So you don't want to do the knots too tight because if you pull too tight, sometimes this goes in. Um, so you can have it lay flat and then double knot it as it's laying flat. All right, so once you're finished with this part, you'll just notice, um, you know, you can stretch it out a little bit and kind of flatten it out. What I like to do first is on the sides, I'll tie them together. So if you look at the original one that I did, um, there's a few of these where I tie together just to make the sides a little bit tighter. Um, so you can do that with these as well. You don't want to tie them together if they're too far away. 
because there it will kind of make your weave bunch up a little bit. So just do the ones that are next, right next to each other. So now that we're done with all the knotting, I'm gonna go around and just do a very um, close cut and then just cut off all these little tails. All right, so here is your weave. Um, so here's what it looks like. Oops, here's an extra. Your, here is your tapestry. So here's the original one. So you can see this one is a little bit wider. Um, again, you can use them to, um, you know, put a hot plate on uh, or use it as a coaster um, or just something fun like that. So again, this is part two. This was just a very simple weave. If you want to join me for part three, I am going to go over on creating this mini wall tapestry. Um, so I hope to see you guys in part three. Bye.